Be advised, suspects are armed and dangerous. Parks have broken into the bank via an underground tunnel. Multiple reports of civilian casualties reported inside the building. Possible entry points from rooftop chopper is on standby. What's up everybody, Drew right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Zero Hour because they just came out with a brand new update called Operation Red Wedding. We're going to hop into it, but before we do that, be sure to like up the video so that more people can see it. Subscribe if you're new and ding that bell so that you can get more content on Zero Hour or any other game that I decide to cover. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hop into it. So Zero Hour's Operation Red Wedding consists of five new weapons, one new map, and miscellaneous improvements. They are also bringing improvements in network structure and setting up mocap equipment. Oh, interesting. The update primarily consists consists of content updates, but more quality of life improvements are still on the way. All right, so we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of this. So we're gonna look at the weapons that they were talking about here. The first one is the SKS, which I'm assuming is going to be for the terrorist, unless I'm mistaken. The description reads, sat right in between the distinguished bolt action, Mosin Nagant, and the historic AK-47 platform, which dominated for decades. For this reason, the SKS is a middle child everyone forgot. Really? I find that hard to believe, but okay. The SKS-45 is a homely, tough, robust rifle. Its metalwork and stock may be crude, but it is proven to be a remarkably reliable rifle, as are most Soviet-made guns. The rifle's lightweight and open-style iron sights made acquiring a target easy at even 200 meters. This is available for the terrorists, like I just said. Okay, cool. Pretty cool. Pretty neat to add more weapons to the arsenal here. Let's move on to the next thing here. The next thing we got here is the Honey Badger, which is obviously going to be for the SWAT units, I assume, or the counter-terrorists. The Honey Badger was created at the request of an elite U.S. special operation group looking to replace their mp5 sds with an upgraded platform two of the main requirements included the ability to shoot a rifle caliber round while maintaining low visibility and of course it needed to retain a high level of suppression this will be available for the counter terrorists like i said you know it's interesting because somebody actually told me that that the bangladeshi military or police don't actually use the honey badger or this other weapon that i'm about to come up with because they just simply can't afford these types of weapons so this game is kind of giving them a bit of a liberty here but anyways moving on to the next weapon we got the mk12 the MK-12 was built for the U.S. Army to make a smaller, reliable gun and more versatile. The reason is, they needed something to blend better in urban environments. One of the most commonalities of all Mark 8 across Mark 12s is an 18-inch barrel, so that it's long enough to be ballistically effective, but shortened enough to be portable. This is available for the counter-terrorist. I mean, looking at the rifle, it doesn't look very compatible to me. It looks a little too long to be compatible, but okay. Up next, we got the CZ P-10C. It's a pistol. The P-10C is a polymer frame framed striker fired handgun. It came to the market in 2017 for personal defense and the military actually introduced the handgun to be a direct competitor of the G19. This is available for both counter terrorists and terrorists. Interesting. That it would be a competitor to the G19 because I mean the G19 is kind of like the standard issue now right? Or maybe it isn't. I have no idea. I just feel like it's kind of like something that a lot of people use. But anyways the next weapon here is the FN FOUL. Can't go wrong with this weapon. The FOUL or to give its full name the Fusil Automatic Ligier or Ligier. I don't know how you say that. Not sure if I said that right. Probably didn't. Is a battle rifle characterized by its selective fire ability and chambering a full powered rifle cartridge. By modern standards, the FAL is a hefty weapon. Modern assault rifles fire small cartridges and make extensive use of polymers to reduce weight, while the FAL is a full size rifle of entire steel construction. This is available for the terrorists. Yeah, I figured it would only be the FAL to go over to the terrorist side, right? So that's pretty much all the weapons that we have here the SKS, Honey Badger, MK12, P10C, and the FN foul. All right, moving on to the next thing here. We got a new map called Red Wedding. They got a bit of a gif here. In that gif, it looks like there's some sort of party going on, but it's in slow motion as the camera's zooming away and you see like people either already dead or falling down. Guys coming in from the left side with guns and people are trying to flee on the right. It's going to be an interesting party to say the least. I'm going to let that play while I read this off. The Major General's daughter, Tanya, Tanya, was to be married to Mashrub on the 4th of July, but hell broke loose as terrorists attacked the venue during the ceremony. Local officials state at least 40 people have been killed and 15 wounded. If the terrorists manage to capture Tanya, they will use her as leverage to get what they want from the Major. The MS unit has been dispatched to the scene, with the area in strict lockdown. The venue has already been taken over by terrorists, along with civilians still inside. There are fears that the number of dead could rise. Sounds like an interesting map. Can't wait to see it and try it, but moving on. They're going to 
be adding more features to the game that include overhauled movement animation. They are experimenting with various methods to improve the overall FPS movement, animations to counter the stuttered animation transitions. This overhaul is set to change with all current animations in the game thus far. Another feature that they're adding is updating the network structure. They are working together with Photon Networks to give you the best experience with online gameplay. They expect better service and connectivity compared to the prior network structure. This will further improve their security and anti-cheat detection. This may lead to removal of unused or unpopular regions to compensate for more active regions. Another thing that they're looking into is the GeForce Now anti-cheat issue. We are aware of these issues being faced by players using GeForce Now due to the anti-cheat installation being a requirement for quick match. Rest assured with this update, we will have that fixed. That sounds like a pain in the ass. So how's that uh, the nouveau anti-cheat working out for you guys? There's someone speeding around outside the map flying. Yeah, mm, not that great. But anyways, moving on to the next thing here. It looks like they're actually trying to add in AI teammates. We've got what looks like dynamic AI stacking up behind a doorway. Looks kind of clunky still. Then we have dynamic AI breaching in, which still looks pretty clunky. Then we have AI that follow you if you give them the command to follow you, which also looks kind of clunky. Then they have AI that'll move to assign targeting, which also still looks kind of clunky. Uh, there's also one more here where AI will move to positions with formation, whatever that means. Everything just looks clunky to me. But I mean, it is still pretty early. We'll see what it looks like when, you know, that stuff actually comes out. That seems to be it for this update. Tell me what your thoughts are. They plan to have this release date for March 7th, 2022. I have no idea if that means that they're going to also release the Squad AI. I kind of hope that they don't and keep working on it because it looks very clunky at the moment. But yeah, man, it's not a bad update so far. Definitely interesting. I'll have to see what it looks like when it comes out though. All right, that's going to do it for this video. So I'm going to end it here. If you enjoyed the fact that I cover games like Zero Hour, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon or hop on that join button that's underneath the video if you're someone that's new to the channel be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on games like zero hour or any other game that i decide to cover and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye